Hey everyone, this week we've got a rather exciting guest narrator in the form of Mark Ralston, who played Private First Class Mark Drake in Aliens. And this comes courtesy of our collaboration with the awesome people over at In Search of Tomorrow, the 80s science fiction documentary. Stick around at the end for more information on In Search of Tomorrow, and I hope you all enjoy the video. Okay, new people, pay attention. First up, we've got your standard issue M41A pulse rifle. She takes 10 24 millimeter caseless, and she's lighter than she looks. Get within 500 meters and you can drop 15 rounds in a second and ruin someone's day. You can fire full auto or in four round bursts for accuracy. And if you need something bigger, you've got an underslung 30 millimeter grenade launcher to really shake things up. It's solid and reliable, and it won't jam unless you treat it like crap. Next up, you've got the M240 incinerator unit for close range cookouts. It fires thickened naphthol fuel that'll stick right onto a target and stay there. You can use wet shot to fire a stream of fuel without the burner, then light it up afterward, but most people tend to surrender once they're covered in jet fuel. You can also use this thing to fire blind angle around corners to clear a room before going in. Good chance that'll save your ass one day. Only problem with the flame unit is you gotta carry the fuel cylinders around. And if one of those takes a bullet, it'll light you up like a match. This one's my baby, the M56A2 smart gun. She's linked to an infrared tracking headset and an articulated harness. The gun will automatically track the center mass of a target in your field of view. If you don't fight it, it'll adjust itself to stay on target even if you've lost track of it yourself. You can force the gun to aim manually if you need to, but mostly you just want to let her do her thing. You've got 500 rounds of 1028 cases effective at 1500 meters, but you need to give them time to cool down or you'll warp the barrel. Same kind of tech from the smart gun is also used on this, the UA-571C Sentry Gun. It's an automated robotic gun turret. It tracks heat signatures and other signs of movement, then nails them to the wall. Uses the same 1028 caseless as a smart gun, and it can manage over a thousand rounds a minute. Good luck getting up from that. These things are pretty bulky and they can be a pain to carry around, but that won't bother you as much after they saved your ass a few times. In a standard marine fire team, you've got two groups. A two-man rifle group with pulse rifles and a gunnery unit with one smart gunner and a spotter. The gun team is the real powerhouse of the squad, so the other guys should be working to keep them alive and let them do their thing. A full section is made up of two fire teams plus an officer, sergeant, and an APC driver. The M577 APC is how we get around. It's fast, and tough, and just as mean as it looks. She'll hit 42 kilometers per hour in six seconds and can fit 12 Marines in the back. This thing's armed to the teeth. She's got Gatling cannons, particle beams, smart missiles, and nerve gas canisters. So you don't want to be in her way. You'll be glad to have the APC if you get sent to a planet with extreme weather or temperatures. It's rated for almost any kind of atmosphere and stocked for survival situations if you ever get trapped in the field. Last up, we have our wings. The UD-4L Cheyenne Dropship. The dropship hauls the APC and the Marines into the thick of it when we pull a combat drop but it's also a gunship with a full load of cannons and missiles so we can kick ass before we've even landed. Most of the big guns are handled by the weapons officer, or backseater as we call them, so the pilot can focus on flying the ship. When we need to, we can fly the drop ship remotely from the computers aboard the APC, so there's always a backup plan for getting home when the shit hits the fan. So that's it, boys and girls. Remember how all this stuff works, because nobody's going to tell you again. Now get on the ready line before the Sarge gets back, or it'll be you reading this crap to the next bunch of fangs. Move it out!
Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed that, and a big thanks to Mark Rolston for his excellent performance there. If you're a fan of Aliens or of 80s science fiction in general, I would encourage you all to check out In Search of Tomorrow. They're still in the process of their Kickstarter campaign. You can follow the link in the description and it supports Space Dock through affiliate revenue and you'll be able to support this fantastic project which is really delving into some of the most influential sci-fi of that decade that really helped shape the genre as it is today. Links in the description if you're interested. Really do consider checking it out. It's a fantastic project that deserves your attention. Thanks for watching. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off.